In this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at complex power and the power triangle. So the most basic concept in power systems is what's called the power triangle. So it's important that we first get an understanding of what the power triangle is and how that relates to complex power and complex power flow in power systems. So if we take a look at this plot here on the left where we have a voltage that has some magnitude and an angle theta v and then we have current that has some magnitude and has an angle of theta i then we can define like we did in the previous lecture the angle between the voltage and the current as theta so we see here that v has this magnitude it's at this angle i has this magnitude and it's at this angle and then theta is the angle between the two so in other words theta like we said before is going to be equal to theta v minus theta i so now we're going to start defining all our voltages and currents in terms of rms quantities because that's what's typically used in power system analysis so we're going to say that the phasor v this phasor right here has a magnitude of v sub rms at an angle of theta v and likewise the current has a magnitude of i rms and it has an angle of theta i now we said previously that the apparent power s and i'm going to do s phasor is equal to the voltage phasor times the current phasor or rather the conjugate of the current phasor so remember that the conjugate of a phasor is the same phasor but with opposite angles so for example if we say the conjugate of i then that would mean that i conjugate would be equal to i rms at an angle of minus theta i so that's all that means and this is just how we define the apparent power and how that's defined in common power system analysis it's just a convention basically now if we say this is true then we can go ahead and plug in the equations for voltage and current phasors so we would say that the phasor s is going to be equal to v rms at an angle of theta v times i rms at an angle of minus theta i or in other words we can say that that's equal to v rms i rms at an angle of theta v minus theta i so we see here why it's important that we define this angle theta as theta v minus theta i because now we're going to use this angle here so we can say then that this is going to be equal to v rms i rms at an angle of theta now this is the apparent power s expressed in polar form if we want to do the same but express it in rectangular form then we can say that s phasor is going to be equal to v rms i rms cosine of theta plus j v rms i rms times the sine of theta and so from here we can define then one more thing we're going to say that s phasor is going to be equal to p plus j q and so here the s again is the apparent power p is the real power and q is the reactive power so let's go ahead and define that we're going to say s p and q s is the apparent power p is the real power and q is the reactive power and the units for s is the volt ampere the unit for p is watts and the unit for q is volt ampere reactive so v a r lowercase and this is just a convention that i use but sometimes you'll see this as v a r uppercase so that doesn't really matter as long as you say var and not v a so that you can distinguish between the units for the apparent power and the units for the reactive power now you might be wondering why is that important why do we have three types of power and the significance behind it is that s or the apparent power gives us an indication of how much an equipment is going to be heated and so because of that then most equipment used in power systems like transformers 
transmission lines, generators, and so on and so forth, are rated in apparent power. So you would see a rating for a transformer that says, let's say, 2 MVA or 2 megavolt amperes. They're using the apparent power as a rating for the transformer in that example, because again, that gives you an indication of how much heating that transformer can take. Now, one more thing to note here is that the reactive power Q is positive when you have an inductive load and it's negative when you have a capacitive load. And you can see by the fact that S again is the conjugate of the current times the voltage. So if the current lags the voltage, like we said, that happens for an inductive load. Now we have the conjugate of that. So that, that's going to be a positive current essentially because we're taking the conjugate of the current, which is lagging the voltage. So that would then make the apparent power S positive. So when we have an example like this where Q is positive, that means that the load is inductive. We could also have a capacitive load and hence a negative reactive power like this, let's say, for example. And then that would make S like that. And then P stays constant if the resistance in the circuit doesn't change. So again, this top triangle would be the power triangle for an inductive load. This bottom triangle would be the power triangle for a capacitive load. And if there's no capacitance or inductance in the circuit, then S would be equal to P and Q would be zero. Now, one more thing that I want to mention here is I want to derive an expression for the impedance of the circuit in terms of the apparent power. So again, we know that S phasor is equal to V phasor times I conjugate phasor. And we know that V is equal to IC, V equals to I z which means then that i is going to be equal to v over z and so if we have conjugates we can say that i conjugate is going to be equal to v conjugate over z conjugate so we're taking the conjugates of everything and then we can see from here then that s is going to be equal to v phasor times i conjugate phasor which is this expression right here so we would get v conjugate z conjugate and these of course are phasors as well and so if we multiply v phasor times its conjugate then the two angles are going to cancel out so remember that this v phasor is v rms at an angle of theta v and then this conjugate would be v rms at an angle of minus theta v so if we multiply those two numbers we would get v rms squared over Z phasor conjugate. And so notice here that the phasor expression went away because again, we're multiplying a phasor times its conjugate. So the angle of that is gonna be zero and a magnitude is gonna be the square of whatever that is. So in other words to say that is, I'm just gonna say this is gonna be equal to the absolute value of V phasor squared over Z phasor conjugate. And so this equation is going to be helpful when we start taking a look at circuits because now we have an expression that relates the apparent power and the impedance in the circuit and the voltage.